I really can't tell whether to laugh or cry when I think about how long this project has taken me. We are coming up on one year since I started it. Next up on the, on the task list are the rafters and the wall plates. What I've done so far is I've laid the wall plates out and I've screwed two boards to them to keep them in the exact position that they will be on top of the walls and that's right at six feet. I've created a template that looks like this um, so I can easily reproduce the rafters. We have to make seven sets of them and I've also made a sample rafter to make sure that things go together how I want. That looks like this. We have a sloped bridle joint and that is going to sit right here on the top of the wall plate and here's the other side of the rafter. It's going to slide together just like this. We're going to cut some pockets down here in these wall plates. We're going to make a template so that we can repeat that all the way down either side. Once that's done, we'll drill a hole right here in the center. We'll drive a peg through and that's going to keep this sitting nice and tight um, on top of the wall plates. Here's the, uh, the finished rafter system. There are seven sets of them. Uh, the, the spacing is a little bit unique because uh, the front one is right out on the end of the wall plate and the second one and the sixth one are right in line with the front wall so that when we run our siding up we have something uh, we can connect to. Um, the rafters are set into these pockets on the tops of the wall plates and the way the forces work here is forces are going to be pushing down on the rafters which are going to try to push these wall plates apart and that's why we have this dovetailed tie beam. Um, there's, a, there's another episode on this dovetailed tie beam that will explain uh, how to cut that but the idea is that it resists the rafters pushing out. So we need to cut um, six more sets since I've already made my sample and they have this uh, bridle joint on the top with a spot for a peg and then they're reduced down I think it's to about three inches here and then this is reduced down to two inches um, so that we have um, some eaves uh, to prevent dripping down on the side of the building. Uh, the overall length is roughly uh, this is like just over 51 inches but I think we're just we're gonna rough cut these four by fours um, at about 55 inches so that we have just a little bit of extra space to work with. Now that we have the pile rough cut, um, we're going to go ahead and pick half of them and put our first template on there. When we put our template on, we want to register it to what is going to be the top of the roof. Because if we register it to the bottom, we're going to have different heights when we go to lay our roof boards down. So I register it to the top, and the spot where it's going to sit down into the wall plate is already reduced. So by the time we get this cut, the, the section for the wall plate is at three and a quarter, and um, the eaves or the rafter tails are two inches. Now earlier I mentioned uh, the rough cut of these was like 55 inches. Um, actually when I went and measured again, uh, we are all the way up to five feet. So I've rough cut um, uh, at least 12 of these. Actually I think I've done a couple of extra, but all of them rough cut at five feet. And now we're going to go ahead and pick half of them and lay this first template out. We're going to start with the tenon side of the bridle joint and now that we have our first cut which is roughly um, 49 and a half degrees uh, we can use our other template and just lay it across here line it up flush and bring this line right here across so that we know how deep um, our tenon needs to be where the, the shoulder is going to be so 
So put it on one side, flip it over, throw the template on this side as well. Everything lined up real nice. And that is where our shoulder needs to be. Just like other places in this project, we're going to use a single reference side to pull our measurements from. In this case, we're going an inch and a quarter, and then two and three quarters, leaving us with an inch and a half wide tenon. With these marked, we're going to go over to the bandsaw and take off the majority of the waste. With the six um, remaining uh, rafters that require tenons cut, now we can turn our attention on to the other side of the bridle joint, and that is the one that looks like this here. It's pretty much the inverse, I guess it is just the inverse of this joint, and so we're going to measure our inch and a quarter over, and then um, two and three quarters to make this gap. So to measure this, or to, to mark it out, we can do, we can take a piece like this and use our template again and lay it right across here like this. I'm going to make sure we leave enough space um, to cut off this corner, but then we can draw a line here and draw a line here. And the one we'll cut is this side, but then this line is the one that we'll carry through to the middle here. We'll cut on the bandsaw like this and like this here, and then we'll use a chisel um, to knock out the center so that it uh, fits with these, the other portion. With the rest of the six rafters um, bridle joints cut and fit, it's time to turn attention to the tails. We're going to reduce the, the eave or the rafter tail to two inches, and then right here it's going to be three and a half. This comes in 16 inches, and then from this three and a half section, we're just going to taper it back to the four inch over about a foot. I'm going to mark these with my template and then go to the bandsaw and cut out the rest of the rafter.
what we want to do is find is to cut a pocket in these wall plates for this to rest in. So what I've done is I've screwed on just a, a, a block of wood to hold it here and held the rafter over the edge and then used my pencil to reach in here and mark my first cut. So it's symmetrical on both sides, same thing for both. So we're going to come in the four inches here and we're going to cut out this section um, and then we'll make a template from this uh, to continue on down the wall plates. Two outer rafters are in place, the pockets are cut, ready to go. I made a template here that looks like this so that I can just slide it over um, the, the wall plate to see exactly what the shape um, the pocket is going to be. So next up we're going to go through and do uh, the middle one, just right down the center. And then we have one that goes right in line with the front wall, one right in line with the back wall, and then that'll leave space for the remaining two uh, to divide whatever space is left over.